Hello, I'm Marcus D. Anthony, and welcome to a 5-Minute Mystic. And this is my video series where I answer people's questions about the nature of modern spirituality and also mystical experiences. And today's question is a very important one, and it comes from Joe. And I'll just read the letter here. Here's what he says. I just watched the Eckhart Tolle video at the end of your blog, Divine Failure. And you'll see a link to that on my webpage, just above the video, if you're on my webpage watching this. As soon as it started, I felt a pressure or a dull tingling in, in the center of my face, from just above my eyebrows to the bridge of my nose. I paid no attention at first, but when I paused the video, it stopped and started instantly when I started it again. I have never had that happen before. Of course, it is my third eye, which is not opened and which I am not that interested in opening, as I want to prioritize awakening or perceiving the true mind. I like that this is your focus as well. However, your third eye has been active for years. Is it, is, is it a necessary step? I really don't think it is. But then this thing happened with a video by one of the uh, masters of uh, awakening. Any guidance appreciated. If one of your books answers this perfectly, then just tell me and I'll get it. Happy to support you sincerely. By the way, third eye continues to apply pressure. It seems to be pulling in presence with it, as in the experience of presence, but the ego is active for sure. I can feel that as well. What is going on? Um, okay, Joe. So the, the first thing is the third eye is actually a real thing. It's not just something that um, crazy mystics from, from India made up, you know, or part of some mystical tradition which doesn't have any relevance. It's a, an energy center which exists within the chakra system. And uh, when I was um, well, about 20 years ago, uh, my third eye spontaneously opened, as, as you're aware. It seems that you're aware of that because I've written about it. Um, I just sat down to meditate one day after um, reading one of Stuart Wilde's books. And Stuart Wilde recommended this particular process where you relax and put yourself into a deep state of relaxation and then ask the universe questions. So I did that. <clears throat> and what I noticed almost, almost straight away was that a blue light started opening, or it opened uh, around about here. And if I close my eyes now, I, I can still see it. It's just a blue light. If I really relax and focus on it, it kind of just starts expanding. Now, um, that experience was I think, spontaneous in the sense that I didn't actually try to open the third eye. I didn't really know what it was, to be honest, the third eye. I'd sort of heard vague stories about it. Um, but intuitively, I knew what it was when I experienced it. So there's an, a, certain, a certain kind of a grace which is involved in these kind of higher spirit, well, if you want to call it higher, these spiritual experiences. Um, like Kundalini experiences or awakening experiences, you know, you know there's, there's a certain degree of control and that we can we can put ourselves in certain kinds of states of awareness, but um, whether the the particular process opens up or how it unfolds is is not necessarily in your direct control. But obviously, my example shows the the, uh, the act of focusing on um, the intuitive mind or the natural intuitive intelligence or what I call integrated intelligence in the mind. The, the, trying to activate that can also trigger the, the um, opening of the third eye. And it's true also that the third eye is, is closed or not fully activated in most people. Okay? Because after, I, after that experience of opening, then all kinds of um, psychic and intuitive experiences open, open to me. And that's what happens. Because the third eye is a kind of portal into other dimensions. And it allows you to, to, to peer out into the astral realms and, and perceive all, all kinds of things. In my, in my case, I also hear things, um, uh, the auditory kind of intelligence, and I also feel things as well. The feeling senses, I call it, they can be developed without opening the third eye. So you can develop the strong intuitive intelligence of, of feeling something's right or wrong um, without opening the third eye. So that's another important distinction. Um, okay, so you talked about, uh, Joe, you talked about um, wanting to focus on the, the, the true mind. Well, in, in, in a sense, all mind is an illusion or, or it's all a kind of a fantasy experience. Perhaps fantasy is not the right word. But it has a tendency um, to move out into what is not real. Because whatever is real is what is right in front of you at the moment. So at the moment, I'm looking at a, a video camera which is sitting in front of me. And that's, that's really what's real. And anything else that I um, uh, imagine about the past or the future is of the mind. 
Now, the psychic realm, when you experience it, in a sense, is also of the mind. Um, but it can be an experience of something which is, is real in, its, in, in itself. Um, perhaps not physically real and that you can touch it, but it, it represents um, a perception of things uh, that do have actual um, reality within their dimensions that they experience. For example, if you experience um, uh, the sense of having your mind affected by somebody else's thought projections, that can be in some cases an actual um, can, it can be a truth because all mind and consciousness does have a kind of force to it. So it could possibly be, be a real thing. It could also just be a, your imagination as well. But I won't get into the, being able to distinguish these kinds of things. And that brings us into the next issue with the psychic realm. And that is, if you, you can kind of become lost in them and, and very confused by them. Because once you open up that realm, then you can start to see and sense other people's thoughts and feelings, the thoughts and feelings of not only spiritual guides, but also entities which are not necessarily helpful to your journey, and they do exist out there, I can assure you. And you can also start to see and experience your own projections from your own mind. So this can be quite confusing. This is why a lot of spiritual teachings suggest that you, that you don't uh, play too much in the psychic. Um, now, in your, in your own case, uh, there's my, my sense of your experience of this is that you're afraid of what the third eye represents, or getting lost in it, or losing control. And uh, this is, as I mentioned, this, this, there's some relevance or, or truth to this kind of fear. But my suggestion is that you simply relax with the experience. If you like, you can bring attention to the third eye. Uh, but in, in a state of presence. So relax into the body. You can take five breaths, as I recommend in some of my books. Relax deeply into the body. Then you can move your attention up to the third eye. And like any kind of uh, mental projection or anything in the mental realm, you can bring loving awareness, a non-judgmental awareness to it. You're not trying to get rid of it or close it down. In a sense, you can't close it down. It's just developing the right relationship with whatever information or experience comes forward. You don't try to get rid of the ego, you don't get, try to get rid of judgments. You just develop a witnessing capacity. So you're witnessing what's happening from, from a higher mind. And the more grounded you are in your body and in, and in presence, the less effect that any kind of information or any other kinds of spiritual entities can have on you. So presence is really important. That's the first thing that you should prioritize, being present and grounded in the body. And then if you want to play in the, in the psychic realm, well, um, I wouldn't necessarily re recommend it, but in itself it's not, not any more evil than say, playing in the mind, playing in the world of the mind. It's just part of the life experience. And if it opens for you, then in a sense it's part of your journey, just as mine opened. I don't know why it opened, but it appears to be just some kind of gift that I have that allows me to see these things. And I can use it also in my spiritual counselling, and in maybe talking to you two here, um, in you know, guiding other people, and writing my books also, you can tap into that kind of knowledge. I can tap into that kind of knowledge. So if that opens up for you, then, then great. Just don't get lost in it. Um, in, my, in my sense is that this might be a, a really important part of your journey. Um, the awakening process, or just being fully present, is, is more important. Um, okay, what else have I got here that I wanted to suggest to you. Um, don't confuse the psychic for the for, for spiritual awakening. I think you're probably aware of this yourself. Some New Age teachings um, kind of encourage people to get lost in the psychic realm. You know? And the, the reason a lot, for a lot of the attraction or addiction to the psychic, as I call it, is because people not, are not fully present. And when we're not fully present in life, the mind starts to become tired and life starts to become kind of dull and boring. And so we seek out things that kind of, a lot, kind of you know, slap us awake. You know, it can be you know, sexual experiences, it can be you know, buying lots of new cars, toys or whatever. And the psychic can also be something that sort of snaps us out of, out of, our, out of our delusion of, um, or out of our non-present state. So um, they don't fall into that trap, you know. 
bring your focus. The water is already beautiful enough and wonderful enough if you're fully present and the mind is quiet enough. So you don't really need to become lost in the psyche. Now, use the intuitive mind uh, by all means, um, but don't get trapped there. Um, so I think you also mentioned that the, at the end of your letter that you know the ego is still active. Well, that's, that's okay. It will always be active. You know, my ego is still active. You, you don't get rid of the ego, you just develop a loving relationship with it. It's like the inner child, you will develop a loving relationship with it. And you mentioned also what kind of books that I might have that, I might have that address these kind of issues. Well, I've got two that, two that I would suggest to you. The first is um, Discover Your Soul Template, which is a, basically about the development of the intuitive mind, but it also touches upon uh, the, the kind of things that I've mentioned here, how to ground yourself in the body. And the other one is The Mind Reader, which is my semi-autobiographical novel. It's, um, it's fictional, but all the, all the events in that, in that book are, are based on real things that happened to me. And uh, it details a lot of the mistakes I've made as well, um, and some of the traps of getting too caught up in the psychic. So I think you'll find that very um, useful. A lot of people like that book uh, that have read it, so I think you'll like it too. And you can find those books on, on Amazon.com. The, uh, the Mind Reader, though, is only available as an ebook. Okay, uh, Joe, I hope that helped you. And uh, if you have any questions, anybody else out there, please uh, feel free to send, send them in to me, and I'll answer them here on the 5 Minute Mystic. Okay, see you next time.